We are going through exercise 6D, and in this video, we'll be answering question 4A, which says solve each of the following. And here's the first one we need to solve for. So remember, the aim of the game is to get it into a factorized form so we can use our null factor law to solve for x. Now, in order to get it into that factorized form, the first thing you should look for is whether or not we have a common factor that we can take out to the front. And in this case, we don't. So that means this is going to be quite a long question in order to get this in its factorized form. So when we're factorizing a cubic, our first step is using our uh, factor theorem, which tells us we need to keep subbing in numbers until we get zero out. Now we don't have to just, you know, sub in any random number. We're just going to consider factors of 30. So let's just list out some factors of 30. Factors of 30. What are they? So it's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 15, or plus or minus 30. So we're going to sub in these numbers until we get 0 out, and then we'll found our first factor. Now don't freak out about having to do all of these numbers. As I said, these questions are more or less engineered in a way in which, you know, normally one, two, or three is going to work. So let's begin. And as I said in class, you always want to start with a one because it's the easiest thing to sub in. So if I sub in one here, I'm going to get one minus 19 plus 30. Now, just by looking at this, we don't have to go any further. It's quite clear that isn't going to be equal to zero. So let's move on to negative one. In which case I'm going to get negative 1 there, then I'm going to get plus 19, then I'm going to get plus 30. Quite clearly, again, there's no way that's going to give me 0. Let's now put in 2. So I'm going to get 8, then I'm going to get minus 19 times 2 is negative 38, <clears throat> then I'm going to get plus 30, plus 30. Alright, this looks promising uh, because 8 minus 38 is going to be minus 30, and then I'm going to a plus 30, and would you look at that? It's 0. So this is where you breathe a sigh of relief. Hooray. Don't write hooray in your test, but I'm going to do it here. Hooray. We can stop. So that means now, and this is what I really uh, focused in on in class, if I subbed 2 in and it equals 0, what's my factor going to be? My factor is going to be x minus 2. That's going to be, let me write a factor, a factor of, uh, let's just say p of x. We're just calling this p of x right here. So therefore, x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. Okay, what is our second step now? Our second step. Our second step is dividing, is dividing. So what I'm going to do is go x minus 2, and then I'm going to divide it by uh, this right here, x cubed minus 19x plus 30. x cubed minus 19. Now, ooh, let's stop for a second. As you, if we look up here, can you tell that we've skipped x squared? So when we're dividing, what you're going to have to do is put in 0x squared, then, then make that plus, pl minus 19x, then it was plus 30. Now you don't want your mistake to be writing down the question wrong, so let's just double check it, double check it a few times. All right, that looks good. Let's divide. Okay, let me get a blue out. How many times does x go into x cubed? It goes in x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times that is negative 2x squared. Then I'm going to subtract like this they're going to go away. This is going to become positive 2x squared. I then I'm going to carry down my 19x. Then I'm going to start again. How many times does x go into 2x squared? It goes into goes in 2x times. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. Then I'm going to subtract. So let me put in that. Uh, so this is going to be 0 there. This is going to wind up being negative 19x plus 4x because I've got a negative and a negative. So that's going to end up being negative 
x, then I'm going to carry down my 30. Then I'm going to go, how many times does x go into negative 15x? It goes in negative 15 times. Then I'm going to go negative 15 times x is negative 15x. Negative 15 times negative 2 is going to be positive 30. Then I'm going to subtract and I'm going to get, these are going to go away, then I'm going to get 30 minus 30, which is zero. Now, why is it important that we got zero? Because x minus two is a factor. That's what we proved in our first step. So if we didn't get zero out here, something would have gone wrong. We have zero remainder, which makes perfect sense. All right, so let's just look at everything we've done so far. It's looking good. Let's now go on to our third step. So let me come here. Step number three. Step number three. So this is taking quite some time, isn't it? Step number three is going to be writing down what we know. So in our factorized form, we know it's going to be, whoops, that's an ugly x. It's going to be x minus two. Then it's going to be x squared plus two x minus five. x squared plus two x minus 15, sorry, not five, minus 15. All right, our third step is to factorize this quadratic if possible. So what I need is two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15 and sum to get me two. Now, hopefully you can immediately tell me that those numbers are going to be five and negative three because five times negative three is negative 15 and five plus negative three is two. So that means I can now rewrite this as x minus two and then it's going to be x plus five, x minus three. And let me just move this over a bit. Perfect. Now that we have it in our factorized form, so that is right here, this is what we were after. We can now use our null factor law, which tells us, well, it tells us that this right here so let me bring this down. Let me get rid of these. This right here, if you remember at the very beginning of the question, it was set equal to zero. Let's just zoom out to prove that to you. If we go right to the top of our working here, you can see that it was set equal to zero. So that means we can't change it, it still has to be set equal to zero. We've just factorized it now. But now that it's equal to zero, what we can say is that, well, therefore, my x is going to be equal to two, negative five, and three. So all I'm doing is setting each of these equal to zero, then solving for x. So therefore, this is going to be my answer. If you're confused by this step, please refer back to uh, questions one and two, where we went over it in quite a, a bit of detail. But yeah, hopefully this question has made sense to you and has shown you how you would approach a question like this. So it's really utilizing what we saw in our last chapter, which is how to factorize a cubic. And then once you've factorized it, you're simply using your null factor law to get your values of x. Hopefully this was helpful.